All right, so this is my 64 Chevy Impala convertible. And as you can see, it has a, uh, an LQ9 in it, which is, um, it's essentially an LS3 now. Now it has the different intake. It's got L92 heads on it. Um, so it's basically a six liter high compression, 10 and a half to one engine. And it's hooked up to a Muncie four speed transmission. Um, you can kind of check out the shifter setup I got in here. Um, and this is how I did it. Um, so basically you got your LS engine, which is the same 4.8, 5.3, 6 liter, 6.2. They're all basically the same uh, size and dimensions. Um, and mine specifically uh, for this 64 Chevy Impala uh, swap, I have the LS3 intake. It fits under the hood, unlike the truck, uh, the truck intake. I haven't actually tried the truck intake on this but I would bet it comes darn close to hitting the hood. Um, I actually have the truck in, uh, intake on this engine and you can see how tall it is in comparison uh, to the LS3 intake. Um, I also have all of the Camaro accessories. So I have a Camaro uh, harmonic balancer, the Camaro water pump, um, Camaro power steering pump and alternator, and um, yeah, let's see, the hoses. I went to a auto parts store and with the general idea of the hoses that I needed, and I ended up just picking some off the shelf that seemed to fit my needs. This one, you can see it's part number 22358 uh, from Gates. And the bottom one is actually sort of a mishmash of different ones. I'll try and get some light on it for you. So it's actually two different size hoses because the bottom radiator hose is uh, larger than the water pump side. So it's actually two hoses and I made an adapter for the center that goes from, I don't know, it's probably like one and a half inches to one and a quarter inches or something like that. <clears throat> um, as far as mounting the actual engine, it has the generic, well you can't really see them in this, in this scenario, but I basically have the same generic motor swap um, mounts that everybody uses. <clears throat> they're, they're on eBay, uh, you can buy them from a bunch of different vendors, and they basically just move the engine um, to a forward or backward, wherever you want it, and it uses just normal small block Chevy uh, rubber motor mounts. Um, on, the, on the frame side, I used regular Chevy Impala, uh, 1961 to 64, I believe, small block Chevy motor mounts. Um, and what you probably can't tell, unless you get really close, no, it's not gonna work. Um, but basically there's like a 3 16 inch spacer under the, under the frame mount. Um, and that jacks up the motor enough um, so that I can use the, um, the 99 plus, uh, LS1 Camaro style oil pan. So I got the LS1 Camaro oil pan and I also notched the frame just a little bit on each side of the cross member and that allowed me to, um, in combination of putting these spacers under the motor mounts, it allowed me to get the motor up enough so it didn't hit my frame. The exhaust manifolds are C5 Corvette manifolds that I cut the bottoms off of and I put V-band clamps on the bottom. And then I just made my own downpipe. Um, it's three inch on both sides and it collects into a four inch pipe and then I have a straight four inch pipe going up the back of the car. Um, let's see, what else? Let me just move on to the other side. Over here, um, you can see I do have a aluminum radiator. This is just a standard universal radiator that I bought on eBay. Uh, and then I made the brackets for it, <coughs> which you can see here. You can see the fan brackets. Um, I just kind of whipped up some fan brackets and then I welded some brackets to the radiator itself so that it mounts in the factory location. Um, let's see, on this side, um, if I can get some light, which I'm not sure I can. Let me pause for a second and I'll grab a flashlight. All right, so on this side of the engine, down right below the steering column, 
You can see that I have the, um, the clutch pedal bracket mounted to the frame. I wish I could get a better shot of it, but it's pretty tough to do. Right there. So there's the Z-Bar, and I made a bracket um, for the engine because LS engines don't have the bracket um, to hold a Z-Bar. So I bought a, a new... Um, I bought a new ball end for a Z-Bar bracket, and I made a bracket for the side of the motor to hold the Z-Bar. So now I still have all the mechanical clutch linkage um, under the hood and up to the clutch pedal. It all works just like the original setup did, and it pushes down on the clutch lever on the side of uh, the bell housing for the Muncie transmission. So the Muncie transmission mounts, um, that is with a special bell housing that is actually the same as a big block bell housing from the 60s and 70s. I'll, uh, I'll get the part number for you. The bell housing that I used is actually a, um, a bell housing that I bought from a company online. I forget exactly which company it was, um, but I can tell you that it was part number BHCV-10004. Uh, it was $267, and it's a bell housing that mates up the LS to uh, Muncie 4 speed. Um, technically, I didn't have to buy that bell housing because an old big block um, big block Chevy bell housing, I'm pretty sure would have worked. Um, the catch is that it doesn't have all of the mounts for um, the LS um, on the back of the head or on the back of the block. It doesn't have that top center bell housing bolt that the LSs have. Um, for the clutch and flywheel, I just used a generic 11 inch clutch. Um, let me get some more light on this. <coughs> So I just used a generic 11-inch clutch that um, I think it went to like a Chevy truck or something like that. It was nothing special. It's basically the same clutch that's used in like Chevy trucks, GMC trucks, um, Corvettes, Camaros, Chevelles, pretty much all the cars from like the 60s and 70s, the muscle car era that were made by GM. It's just a typical 11-inch clutch. Um, the flywheel is... A part number FWG-460535 and I got that from a company online as well it may have been the same place that I got the bell housing I honestly forget um, I'll put all these part numbers down in the description as well um, so let's see what else I guess that might be it I got ARP flywheel bolts um, to make sure that that's all good and I think that's probably about it. So that's kind of what you need to get your um, your Chevy Impala uh, engine, or get your 61 to 64 Chevy Impala uh, hooked up with an LS engine. Um, the computer, I have it under this fender. Um, it's, it's actually tucked down here next to the battery. I don't know if you can see it, let's see. Yeah, you can see it right here. Um, so I tucked it right here, I just used the, um, the computer bracket from, I think it was a truck or, I don't know, maybe it was a Camaro, I don't even know. I got it like in a junkyard or from a friend or something. And I just bolted it to the inner fender so it's tucked away. Um, the wiring harness is a stock wiring harness that I just cleaned up. Um, the throttle cable is a universal throttle cable from Low Car. Um, the gas pedal is a pedal from a like a 1988 to 98 Chevy full-size truck. Um, but I did have to cut it up and weld it quite a bit to make it fit. Uh, it was definitely not a bolt-in thing. Um, so that was a little bit of work. I think that's about it. So yeah, that's, that's essentially what you need. Uh, if you have any questions, certainly post the questions and I will, I will help you out. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward if you know what parts to get. Uh, it all just kind of bolts in. So um, good luck, and let me know if you have any questions about it. I'll be happy to help.